it's your girl Jay and today I am here with a very big book haul of 51 books that I have received over the last couple of months. Honestly most of them in the month of June because I attended two publishing events, one from HCC Frenzy and one from Penguin so they provided me with many many books. I'm not gonna lie to you, I did not like go into the hordes of everybody picking up a thousand books because that gives me anxiety. So most of these books are ones that I kind of like waited until everybody was done picking their stuff to grab some of the books because it's just too much for little old me. But I did pick up some pretty great ones so without further ado let us get started. So the first books that I'm going to share with you are from the HCC Frenzy event. They hosted an event in Toronto this year at the beginning of June where we got to come in and listen to a few authors. We got to listen to Cheryl Isaacs talk about her new book which I'm actually going to haul. We also got to meet Elle Kennedy which was really cool. So these are the books from that event. The first book that I have is The Unfinished by Cheryl Isaacs. This was the author that was at the event and we got to listen to her talk about her book. She was really fun to listen to. This follows Avery. She is a runner and on her morning run she comes across a pond in the middle of the woods which awakens horrors that the town of Crooks Falls has long forgotten. So it's kind of the story of that. I'm all for horror books so I'm very excited to pick this one up. The next book I got was A Curse of Blood and Wolves by Melissa McTarran. This is a fairy tale retelling of Little Red Riding Hood and it says that it is perfect for romantic readers and lovers of smut talk. So the next book I got was Loverbirds by Leanne Egan and this one is a enemies to lovers sapphic romance and it also has ADHD representation. So Next I picked up The Life Impossible by Matt Haig. The tagline is what looks like magic is simply a part of life we don't understand yet. This book has very teeny tiny writing so I'm hoping that it comes out on audiobook because teeny tiny writing is intimidating to me and I don't know why but it just is. Next up is one that I am probably the most excited for and it is Legend of the White Snake. This is by Cher Lee and it says that it is a queer fantasy retelling of a Chinese folktale. It says it is a must read for fans of six crimson cranes and a magic steeped in poison. I'm just obsessed with this cover. I think it's so pretty and it also has like chapter heading art and I just I'm so excited for this one. The next book I have is Misadventures in Ghost Hunting. This is by Melissa Yu and it follows a girl who is able to see ghosts and there's also a pigeon so I'm hoping it's a companion animal. I hope it can talk. The next book I got was Looking for Smoke. This is by K.A. Cobell. It follows a girl named Mara who is attending a traditional Blackfeet giveaway to honor Lauren's missing sister and when a girl ends up murdered during this giveaway the friends who are there become the prime suspects of the investigation so it's all of them having a complicated history with the girl who was murdered and how that plays into how they are suspects. I think it sounds very interesting. It says that despite deep mistrust, the four must now take matters into their own hands and clear their names, even though one of them may be the murderer. The next book I picked up was A Voyage of the Damned. This one is by Francis White, and the tagline is that there will be magic, there will be murder. It says 12 magical blessings, 12 days at sea, one chance to stop a killer and save the world. Apparently it is a TikTok sensation that has come to North America. Next up we have The Art of Pretend by Lauren Cool. It says it is a tantalizing debut about a woman drawn into the orbit of her friend's wealthy artist family and the complications that arise when she embarks on a secret relationship with the golden boy brother. I'm hoping somebody dies. It says that it is a novel about wealth, power, art, ambition, and the stories and lies we tell others and ourselves. Next up I have The Capital of Dreams by Heather O'Neill. This says it is a breathtaking dark fairy tale of survival and betrayal. Those last books were all the arcs that I received from that event and now I have finished copies that they also gave us during the event. So the first one that came in our swag bag was Body Check by L. Kennedy, which I got signed by L. Kennedy, which is really cool. But I've never actually read an L. Kennedy book. I know that she's like a beloved author, so I'm very excited to finally own and pick up one of her books. Next, I got White Hot Kiss by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I actually own this book as the old cover with like the people on it, but I've never read it, and I like this one a lot better than that cover, so 
and there were a bunch left on that table after everybody had done their pickings, I grabbed it since nobody else was taking it. Next up, I have Poison Study by Maria N. Snyder. This is like a beloved book on booktube. I've been wanting to find a copy of this for a very long time because I have heard really good things about this series, and I know that Reagan from Peru's Projects really likes it, so I was definitely intrigued, so when I saw it there, I decided to grab it. The next book I picked up was The Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Lori Gilmore. I believe this is the first book in a, like, small town romance series. There are, I think, three or four others, but I thought it sounded really cute and is perfect for the autumn season, so I'm definitely going to be saving it for that time. Next, I have Jay's Gay Agenda by Jason June, and honestly, I picked this up because it's my name. It was sitting on the table for a really long time once everybody already picked all their books, so I've always wanted to read it only because my name is in the title. <laughs> the next book I picked up was Margot Zimmerman Gets the Girl. This is by Brianna R. Shrum and Sarah Waxbaum. This is like a snarky sapphic romance, so I needed it. The next book I have is The Falling in Love Montage by Sierra Smith. This is another sapphic romance. Clearly there is a bit of a trend with me. We love queer books. I'm gonna keep reading queer books and it's gonna bring me joy. And then the final book that I picked up from that event is Happily Ever Afters by Elise Bryant. This is a rom-com. It follows a 16-year-old writer who has just been accepted into a prestigious art school, and she is a little bit stuck with her writing, and her best friend decides that she needs some, let's say, research and needs to fall in love herself in order to write the perfect love interest. So that's what the story is about. I think it sounds really cute. I'm very excited to pick it up. Now moving on to the books that I got from the Penguin event. Four of them are books that are written by the authors that spoke at the event, so I'm gonna go over those first. And the rest are books that were on the shelves that you were allowed to take. The first author book that I got was The Last Hope School for Magical Delinquents. This is by Nikki Pau Petro, who actually wrote Crowns of Feathers, which I loved. So I didn't even know she was coming to the event, so I got very excited when I realized that that was who it was. But it is also signed, which is exciting, but this is her newest middle grade book, and it has magic and bad children, and I'm so excited for it. I think it sounds like so much fun. The next book that I have is probably the one that I'm most excited about. I just think it sounds so cool. It's Fledgling by S.K. Alley, and this author is the nicest human like, she was so sweet. I waited until, like, the very end of the signing to go talk to her because she had the longest lineup, so I figured it would make more sense for me to just chill and wait to talk to her. And like I said, she was so nice. She asked me if I was a teacher because I gave teacher vibes, which I am taking as a huge compliment. But this is the first book in a new duology. It is quite the chonker. But this is another one that I'm really hoping is on audio because chonky books terrify me, but it sounds so freaking good. The next one that I have is The Lightning Circle. This is by Vicky Evansickle. This is another one that she signed, and I think it's really cool because I actually met Vicky when she was an influencer back a long time ago at an Indigo event that I was invited to, and she was one of the, like, OG people who were there. So it was really cool to see her have a published novel. This one is written in verse, and it's all about her time as a camp counselor, but it's not her as the character, if that makes sense, but she drew heavily on that experience of being a camp counselor. But I've done camp my whole life, so I am very excited to read it. It also has, like, pictures in it, so it's definitely going to be a very quick read, but I'm very excited to pick it up. The next one I have is Lockjaw by Matteo L. Sorelli, and he was so funny and such a little cutie. But this is like a horror book. He was talking about how he started off trying to write a very like happy like romance kind of thing and it turned into a horror book <laughs> and I think that's the funniest thing ever. But just listening to him talk about his book made me so excited to read it because he was just so excited to be there and like talk about it. And this is one that I do actually have an audiobook so I will be listening to it very soon. Now the rest of the books are ones that I either got given to me by other people or I picked myself off the shelves. But the first one is the one that I picked on the shelves because I really wanted to read this and I actually have already read it and I ended up giving it a four out of five stars but it is The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. It's like a witchy sapphic female revenge story. Definitely definitely recommend it for like the autumn Halloween times. 
so stinking good. Next up is The Kiss of the Nightingale by Addie Denner. This is the other one that I picked up myself because I just think it sounds so cool. But the tagline is, Stolen magic, true loves, a sister's fate, let the curtains rise. But it says that it is a stunning and completely unputdownable romanticy novel set in an alternative historical Paris, and it weaves together the seduction of Bridgerton and the magic of Lee Bardugo's Shadow and Bone series. Yes! I'm so excited. And then I have five books that I was actually handed to by other people because I guess they took them from the shelves and then didn't want them so they were just kind of like, here's some books! And I was like, okay, thank you. But it is Heart Still Beating by Brooke Archer. It says that is gripping, romantic, and impossible to put down. It's a dark and immersive post-apocalyptic debut novel about two teen girls whose hearts were ripped apart when the world ended and now must confront the monsters that they've both become. So are we talking like real monsters or like hypothetical monsters? That's what I would like to know. And then I have These Deadly Prophecies by Andrea Tang. I have actually heard of this one. And it follows a sorcerer's apprentice who the sorcerer actually predicts his own death. And then it ends up coming true, so the apprentice has to figure out what happened and she must catch the killer before they strike again, and I think it sounds so much fun. Then I have The Breakup List by Adib Karam. This one has Heart of Hearing representation. It says that it's a romantic comedy. I think it sounds really cute. I'm very excited. And this is another one that I do have on audiobook, so it will be read pretty shortly. Then I have The Loss of the Burying Ground by J. Anderson Coates. It's about shipwrecked teen girls from opposing sides of a long war, and they must find common ground in order to survive. So I'm thinking maybe enemies to lovers, which I am definitely a fan of. And then the final book that I have from that event is Diet Soda Club by Shaz Hayden. And this one says that it's about Reed, who must care for a sister with a life-threatening condition, even if that means breaking the law when their mother leaves. It is a tender and sparkling story about family trust and the lengths we will go for the ones we love. So those were all the books that I received from those two events. So thank you so much to both HCC Frenzy and Penguin Teen for hosting those events and allowing us influencers to be able to have all these books. That was very, very sweet. We very much appreciate it. But now moving on to books that were sent to me by publishers. Um, there are quite a few. <laughs> there are 12 in this stack, so we're gonna try to run through them quickly because I know I talked a lot in that first little bit, but the first two are probably the two that I'm the most excited about. It is The Shadow Between Us and the next book in the duology, The Darkness Within Us by Trisha Levenseller. This was my favorite book in, I want to say, either 2020 or 2021. I was obsessed with it. I loved it so much, and then it was announced that she was releasing another book in that world, so I would definitely be doing a reread of this very soon so that I can pick up this one. It also has gorgeous sprayed edges. It's like an enemies to lovers duology. So I am very excited for these. It doesn't follow Alessandra from the first book. It follows somebody named Chrysantha. Next I would send Ransom Riggs The Extraordinary Disappointments of Leopold Barry. I didn't even know Ransom Riggs was writing another book. So when this showed up, I was like, oh, exciting. I want to say it's a portal fantasy, which I think is so cool, so I'm definitely intrigued. I actually haven't finished Miss Peregrine's. I've only read the first book, so I definitely need to read the rest of them, and then maybe I'll pick up this one. I'm literally looking at them right now, so I do own them. I just have to actually pick them up. Next up, I received Annie LeBlanc is Not Dead Yet. This takes place in a little town where every 10 years there's this contest and somebody is resurrected from the dead. So this girl enters the contest in order to resurrect her ex-best friend who ghosted her a year before she died, but the catch is that they can only come back for 30 days. But Will finds a loophole that will actually allow Annie to stay forever, but the key to that loophole is their other ex-best friend, Ryan, who they might have shared a kiss and hasn't talked to her since. So we love drama. I'm very excited. I think it sounds so good. So we're going to be picking this one up very soon as well. Next up, I have The West Passage by Jared Pacek, and this one, like, cover, hello, beautiful. I honestly have no idea what this one is about, but the tagline is The Ladies Reign, The Palace Rots, The Beast Rises. I'm assuming it is a fantasy, but with that tagline alone, I'm definitely intrigued. But this one just showed up on my doorstep the other day. It says it's a dangerous book of secrets. Ooh, it apparently has illustrations. Oh, it does have illustrations. Ooh, look at that. 
Okay, I'm definitely very much more intrigued now. Oh, that was book one. There's a book two. I wonder if there's a book three. I don't know. Mm. Okay, color me intrigued. Next up, we have One Last Summer. This is by Kate Spencer. It says that it is a dreamy, laugh out loud summer romance that asks, what do you do when the life you've planned isn't what you've dreamed? For fans of Christina Lauren and Annabelle Mona. Again. I know who Christina Lauren is. Have I read any of their books? No. Do not know who the other author is, but we love a rom-com, so I'm not mad about it. Next up, I have Archangels of Funk by Andrea Hairston. It says that it is a fantasy. It is an unforgettable story of music, resistance, and acceptance. It is full of magical technology and theater kid drama about running from your past, hiding from your future, and protecting your present. Interesting. I do have this one on audiobook as well. The next book I received was When Among Crows by Veronica Roth. It says, step into a city where monsters feast on human emotions, knights split their soul to make their weapons, and witches always take more than they give. It is also very short. I believe it is a novella. I will be reading this next, actually, because that just hooked me. Like, excuse me, monsters, knights, and witches? That's going on my bed. The next two books are part of the same series. I have actually already read the first book, so when they asked to send me the second book, I was very excited, and then they were like, we're gonna send you the first book too, and I was like, ah! It is Threads That Bind and Hearts That Cut. This is by Kika Hatzopolu, and I gave this one a five out of five stars. It was so freaking good. I and this is the conclusion to the duology, so I'm very excited. I'm probably going to reread this because I really liked it the first time, so why not? And then, you know, read the second one so we get the full picture of what's going on. Then I have Experienced by Kate Young. It is a romance. It is a friends to lovers. It is also sapphic lesbians we love. And I believe it's about a woman who just turned 30 and now has realized that she likes women. So. And then the final book that was sent to me, who I don't know if it was the author who sent me this or like how they got my address, but I'll take it. It might have been from the publisher, but, but it is The Cage, Volume 1 by M.J. Smith. And it says that it is a a chilling thriller infused with elements of horror and erotica, weaving a tapestry of drama, tragedy, and romance. So I can't say I'm mad about it. I am excited. I just don't know where they got my address from. But it also came with um, a bookmark of uh, two men getting choked, so erotica. Okay, then the final couple of books are books that I purchased myself, so without further ado, we're coming to the end of this book haul. The first four books I found on Facebook Marketplace for $20 for all of them, so I was like, mm -hmm, it's a steal, I might as well. But it is The War of Two Queens, The Crown of Gilded Bones, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, and From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Can I tell you what order these go in? No. I'm gonna assume it's the order that I stack them in, but I don't know. I feel like this one's the first one. I don't know. But I believe it's another Fae story, but I know that it's like a very popular book talk series, and I think that there's more books in the series. I want to say there's like six. So I have the first four now, um, but I am excited to read them, and hopefully they are on audiobook because they are chonkers. I believe this is the first one, second, third, fourth. Please yell at me in the comments if I'm wrong. The next two books I was very excited to find at my thrift store because I read the first book, Crier's War. It's by Nina Varela. I gave it a four out of five stars, but I have the ARC version. So now I have the hardcover copy for $2.50, and then I also found the second one. It's Iron Heart. This is the second book in Crier's War, which I really liked and have been meaning to try to find a copy of this. So for $2.50, I snatched it right up, and I'm definitely going to be reading it soon. I haven't decided if I'm going to pick up the first one again, just to like remind myself what happened. I believe I read it earlier this year, maybe last year. Now I own both of them so I can get rid of my art copy and have the beautiful, actually shiny copy on my shelf. I'm very excited about it. Next one I have is The Book of Living Secrets. This is by Madeline Rowe. I just love this cover. I think it's so cool. It was only $2. It follows these two girls who are obsessed with this book, and then they end up being able to enter the world of the book, and I just think it sounds so good. I'm not gonna lie, I have not heard the best things about it, but for $2, I figured why not take a chance. This and one was very much just, I was in the store, and it was only $2.50, so why not pick it up, because it sounds kind of good, but it is It Will End Like This by Kyra Lee, and it says that it's a propulsive modern thriller inspired by the Borden murders, and I just think Lizzie Borden is really cool and there's a bloody axe on the back, so I was like, we're just gonna take a chance. 
we're just gonna do it and hope that it doesn't suck. And then the next book that I grabbed during that trip to the thrift store was Don't Tell a Soul by Kristen Miller. Again, $2. I just thought the cover was cool. The back says all the best ghosts are girls, so... The jacket says people say the house is cursed, it preys on the weak, and young women are its favorites victims. In Luth, they're called the dead girls. I, it just called to me so I bought it. And then the final book that I picked up was Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. This is a book talk sensation, very popular. And that was the only reason that I picked it up. And I wanted a quick little romance for the summertime, so this one, I just needed it. All right, everybody, so those were all the books that I have recently acquired from events and publishers and my own bank account. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!